Some people like really like her novels and some people just don't like them whatsoever. However, this is 2008 and I was eight years old at the time. Lorraine is just so iconic and she literally has my entire heart, which combined with the infamous Sally Rooney bucket hat, it looks stunning. And so we have the rankings. Hey besties, it's Jaw, and this week I'm going to be reading and ranking the novels of an author I've been wanting to read for quite some time, and given my recent delves into literary fiction and the critical acclaim and commercial success of her novels, I think it's the perfect time for me to do so. And so for this week, I'm going to be reading and ranking the novels of one Mrs. Sally Rooney. I hope you're doing very well besties and that you're taking care of yourself. If you've yet to take that drink of water, please do so, we must remain well and hydrated. And if you've yet to check out my Instagram nor my Twitter, I would highly recommend you go do that because I post some extra bookish content that you're not gonna see here. And so I'm very excited to be checking out all three of Sally Rooney's novels. I think it's gonna be quite an amazing experience for me and just seeing how I truly feel about them. Will I love them? Will I hate them? Who knows? But before we delve any deeper into Sally Rooney's books and Sally Rooney herself, I have a very quick message from the sponsor of today's video and so I'm gonna throw on over to Sponsor Joel in order to tell you all about that. Hello besties, once again I'd like to thank Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. Book of the Month is the super popular book service for readers located within the US with their main objective is to promote new and emerging authors and help readers discover books that they'll love. Every month, Book of the Month curates a selection of new and early release titles for you to choose from so you can spend a little less time researching and a little more time devouring the excellent prose. Plus, Book of the Month is risk-free so you can skip any month, any time, and you won't be charged. I was fortunate enough to be sent all five of their November book picks and so included were Keeper of the Night, which follows half-British Reaper, half-Japanese Shinigami Ren Scarborough, who's on a journey filled with monsters and magic in order to impress the goddess of death. A little hope, following the loves, losses, and dreams of a small community in a Connecticut town. The family, it follows the stories of a decades-long friendship between two women bound by the sins of their fathers. The collective, following a mother whose obsession with the man she believes to be behind her daughter's death, draws the attention of the collective, a group of women who exact their own justice. And finally, how to marry Keanu Reeves in 90 days. And upon finding out that Keanu Reeves is engaged, two friends take a wild road trip to stop the world's most eligible bachelor from making a big mistake. Or maybe discover love was by their side all along. And plus, a book of the month have add-ons which you can add to any month's selection, and I was fortunate enough to be sent two of their add-ons, and so I got Will, which is Will Smith's memoir, which people have said is a profound, entertaining journey of self-knowledge that is brave, astonishing, and inspiring. And also, My Body, a collection of essays providing a profoundly personal exploration of feminism, sexuality, and power, of men's treatment of women, and women's rationalizations for accepting that treatment. I think the one that I'm most excited to read personally is Keeper of the Night purely because I'm very excited to see the world building and also the way that like this whole thing about the goddess of death is going to come around plus I'm a sucker for a really good fantasy. And so if that sounds great to you and you have a US based shipping address then you can use the link in my description and use code FATES in order to get your first book of the month box for only $9.99. And again a massive thank you to book of the month for sponsoring today's video and now we can head back to Sally Rooney. Okay so Sally Rooney is an Irish author and screenwriter who as I mentioned earlier has met critical acclaim and commercial success for her three novels. She is heralded as one of the foremost millennial writers of our time. Normal People in and of itself has sold over a million copies, and so you can really see how popular and also how successful she is as a writer. I'm very interested to see like what draws people so much to Normal People, but also what's drawn people to her other novels as well. From what I've seen through like Twitter and Instagram, the opinions about Sally Rooney can be very divided. Some people like really like her novels, and some people just don't like them whatsoever. It's, it's gonna be quite interesting, like I was talking to one of my friends in my English class the other day and she was literally like you're not gonna like normal people but for now I'm gonna introduce the novels to you so we have Sally Rooney's debut novel conversations with friends which kind of shocked me because I thought her debut novel was just gonna be normal people but then I think I always have that thing where I always think people's debuts are like their most successful novels then it was followed by normal people which is her most popular novel and the one that was developed by Hulu and the BBC into a limited television series that was published last year I know conversations with friends is also getting an adaptation that's really next year so it'll be quite interesting to watch the adaptation after I've read this book and then we have her latest novel which was released this year which is Beautiful World Where Are You and I know there was like a little bit of controversy surrounding one of the publishing events in the UK that they did but I'll go into that in a little bit once I actually get to Beautiful World Where Are You because I don't want to run this intro a bit too long but as I mentioned I'm going to be ranking these books as well in terms of how much I loved them or hated them depending on how I feel about these books at the end but I I 
didn't want to do this alone. And so I invited two of my booktuber friends and Sally Rooney stands in order to give their own rankings and see which one actually is the closest. And so we have Jack Edwards and Carly Thorne who are both providing their rankings for today. I'm not going to be watching their clips that they send me at all until like the very end of the video after I've read all three of these books and have ranked them myself. But I'm also going to be doing my own preliminary rankings as well so it'd be very interesting to see what I rank them as. We'll be starting off with Conversations with Friends, Sally Rooney's debut novel. And I'm very excited to read this because this follows Frances who's 21 years old and I'm 21 so I feel like I might relate to her quite a bit. I find like the art style of Sally Rooney's covers to be very gorgeous. They're very like aesthetically pleasing and I know when like Beautiful Old Where Are You it gets made into like a paperback. I'm hoping they'll continue like this kind of like edition style. So I'm gonna get to reading Conversations with Friends which I've kind of matched today with this outfit. It's like my yellow jumper, yellow book you know. And I'll be back once I finish Conversations with Friends, give the whole spiel and everything and let you know what I think. So yeah, I guess I'll see you in a bit besties. So I finished Conversations with Friends and I thought it'd be better for me to like dress as the book I'm discussing so we can get right into it because I definitely have some thoughts about this and I think this is just such an interesting novel to discuss. So Conversations with Friends basically follows 21 year old Frances who is best friends with her ex-girlfriend Bobby and they basically perform poetry together at these like open mic nights in Dublin and they attract the attention of Melissa and later Nick who are a couple in their 30s and Frances and Nick basically get into an affair together and through that some kind of passive tension ensues. Conversations with Friends is definitely an interesting inspection into interpersonal relationships and how one slight shift in the dynamic can have like a domino effect on all the others. Rooney describes the book as a coming of age story but also notes the significance of the 2008 post-economic crash setting in Dublin. The significance of the setting definitely comes across in her novel as well as many of her characters take an anti-capitalist stance and also a lot of the characters message each other through email and instant messenger which was something I didn't really notice at first until I started questioning why 20 year old characters were emailing 30 year olds instead of like using Instagram and Twitter and social media. Still don't get why they just wouldn't text each other either. However, this is 2008 and I was eight years old at the time, so I don't really know how the social conventions worked back then. In an article for The Guardian, Claire Kilroy notes that Rooney is not a visual writer. There are no arresting images, no poetic flights. She is of the tell, don't show school. Many of the conversations that compromise most of the novel are presented as he said, she said reportage. And Sally Rooney's writing style is definitely an acquired taste. It reminded me a lot of Bernadine Evaristo's Girl Woman Other in this kind of quotation markless style of writing. And whilst Bernadine Evaristo's Girl Woman Other is filled with like very nice descriptions, Sally Rooney instead opts for this plain simple storytelling and it really kind of works because she takes this kind of macroscopic lens to a lot of the body language and a lot of the small things that characters do within this book. Sally Rooney's writing really gives us an insider look into someone's mind. And Sally Rooney even quotes on this herself when talking about her quotation markless style writing as she says that she doesn't see the need for them and she doesn't understand the function they perform in a novel marking off some particular pieces of text as quotations. It's a novel written in the first person isn't it all a quotation? But also I guess for the average reader it would help to know when someone's speaking and know when something's just an internal monologue and so I see why people aren't very much in love with the writing style. Despite how much I really liked the writing it does make the pace incredibly slow and it's not only because of the writing but it's also also because of the way that I felt about the plot as a whole and also the way that I felt about some of the characters. Concerning that, <laughs> I enjoyed the book for what it was and I appreciate Sally Rooney for showing like how unpredictable, chaotic and tough life is trying to figure out your way in the world. She also showcases a lot of issues that students go through such as student troubles, mental health, money worries and even the physical problems that people with uteruses go through. Given that, I feel like whilst the plot did sound intriguing at its very premise, it ends up falling a little bit flat and the is a certain sense of emotional intensity that I feel like was lacking. I don't think it's any fault of Sally Rooney in and of herself, I just feel like that's a consequence because of the perspective that we're reading through. I mean, I was going into this and Carly even mentioned in one of her videos that like if you don't mind not having much plot and just go for the characters, then Conversations with Friends is great. However, I'm very much a plot-based reader. I should know at this point that a story with purposefully unlikable characters does not mean that the story is badly written or should be rated lower. This is basically about incredibly flawed characters 
characters basically fucking up every single interaction they have because they can't really think outside of a perspective of their own. They're very self-involved and the actions they take are very selfish, but that's kind of people in general. And it's kind of why I like this book. Rooney weaves these characters' conversations into these vignettes of Francis's life that just make this story so interesting, but also I feel like I'm just watching something instead of just being within the story. I personally resonate the most with Bobby and Francis because they're 21 year olds and students and I loved the way that Sally Rooney normalized bisexuality within this. I did really like Bobby. I think Bobby was probably my favorite out of the four. Francis' introspections were definitely interesting to read and they definitely related to her when she had like that lack of self-worth. But boy oh boy does she need to like learn self-love because she really like depends on other people to give her life meaning. The self-harming depictions were very like harrowing for me to read personally and I had to put the book down but I find that it really delves deeper into this kind of toxic relationship that she has not only with herself but also with Nick as well. She's in a relationship with a married man and she knows it's never going to work out because he's never going to leave Melissa and yet she's still rooting for him to like love her and to leave Melissa and it's just like it just became more and more clear throughout the novel that Francis just needed therapy and a friend rather than a relationship because it just caused her more issues than what it was worth. I definitely would recommend this if you're looking for that inspection into interpersonal connections and also an introspection into oneself. However, I wouldn't really go into this looking for plot or emotional intensity because the novel kind of has this like weird calmness to it that kind of feels like I'm listening to like a lo-fi version of The Real Housewives. Everyone just has this kind of detachment from their emotions. So we're now going to be moving on to Sally Rooney's most popular the novel, which is Normal People. I am very excited to read this because I just want to know if I'll like it and or dislike it. I'm going to get to reading and I'll catch up with you in a bit, besties. So I finished Normal People and I definitely have a lot of thoughts about this book because there's just so many things to discuss and I ended up enjoying this a lot more than I expected to. So Normal People basically follows Colin and Marianne throughout the years of their on and off relationship with their shifting dynamics of power, class, constant miscommunications and how the world changes around them as they try to conform to society standards and be normal people despite their increasing feelings that they don't exactly fit in. It examines the dynamic between two people in such an intriguing way as not only do they struggle of growing up in an evolving world, but also this kind of habit they have of circling one another. It is again set near the post-2008 economic crash in Dublin, but in this novel, it takes place between the years of 2011 and 2014, showing us a lot of the after effects of the crash and how socioeconomic status impacts the thoughts, feelings, and relationships of our main characters in this book. However, whilst I was reading this, I did find there was a massive similarity between normal people and also conversations with friends, from similar dialogue choices to similar dynamics being presented in Marianne and Connell. And and Sally Rooney even comments on the similarities between these two novels herself in her interview with The Guardian as she thought of conversations as her trial novel and so it gave her a huge amount of permission to write the same thing over again. There's just a huge amount of growth in craft that makes normal people work a lot better than conversations with friends. An example of this is through the writing style as we still kind of get that quotation markless style writing however we see an emphasis in the macroscopic lens that Sally Rooney presents but also a growth in emotional intensity which is something that I really like as a reader. The application of a timeline narrative really helped push the plot along. Because of this, it also allowed me to develop a deeper connection with the novel, and like conversations with friends, normal people does delve into the trope of miscommunication, which is something that I typically don't really like within fiction. However, normal people kind of does this quite well. Rooney communicates her thoughts about the miscommunication trope through an interview with Esquire, saying that miscommunication is something the novelists have always been interested in. As a writer, you're interested in language and you're interested in where language fails. The miscommunications in this novel were not only only tied to the characters themselves, but also to the core themes of power and class that the novel presents as a whole, delivering a rich and succinct narrative. The ending did leave me feeling a bit sad, but because of the interview with Esquire that I will link down below because it's just such an amazing interview and I think Sally Rooney also talks about the ending being kind of like a bittersweet one in a way, as she said, I think it does mean that they're going to be in each other's lives for a long time at least because they let each other in now in a very big way. Marianne as a whole does feel quite similar to Francis from conversations as both of them have abusive family members and also have self-destructive behaviours. Marianne takes her self-destruction through a form of sadism, wanting to be hit and humiliated by her sexual partners. However, because of this, she often feels like she's weird or abnormal, whilst actually it's something that's grown into an entire community of people and people who explore this as a form of sexual gratification, as long as it's done consensually and also boundaries and limits are established. However, Rooney notes that she thinks it's important to point out that she certainly wasn't trying to say that it was wrong for Marianne 
Marianne to want violence as part of her sex life. But just to say that if both people aren't interested, there's still a way that they can both be honest about power disparities that have structured their sexual relationship. We really got to see her intrinsic thoughts throughout the novel, and there was just kind of like an utmost honesty about her perspective that I really appreciated, which kind of also links within her character, because Marianne doesn't really care what other people think about her. Connell's character was one that did go through a lot of character growth. He originally was someone that cared a lot about reputation and what other people thought about him, and we see this through him wanting to hide his relationship with Marianne in high school. The explorations and intersections of class identity and also male mental health in this novel were very interesting and also very much appreciated, as often male mental health is very stigmatised, as we see through Marianne's brother Alan making comments about Connell's mental health. But what was most intriguing to me was Rooney's intersection of the two bits, as Connell's only option of seeking help was through the free university counselling service, and she notes that there certainly are gendered aspects to people's ability to seek help in those situations, but there are huge socio-economic aspects as well. It was the fact that he found himself in a position to ask for help that was the first big barrier. And we witnessed Marianne become part of his emotional support network, and we see Connell reciprocate this as well. Both of these characters are intrinsically flawed as people, but it was very interesting to see them grow together and see how the dynamic and the environments around them help change them as people. And another notable character that I would like to highlight is Lorraine. Lorraine is just so iconic and she literally has my entire heart because she's literally a mother to Connell. She puts him in his place when he needs to be put in his place. She kind of reminds me a lot of my mother because she's not afraid to give me brutally honest advice. So overall, I would highly recommend this novel if you're looking for a story about a shifting power dynamic between two people. However, I wouldn't go into this expecting a romance or a happy ending because that's not something Sally Rooney exactly offers. But I'm very much interested now in viewing the adaptation of normal people, so I definitely think I will watch it at some point. I'll probably give my thoughts on like Twitter or Instagram or something, so definitely keep an eye out. And now, we'll be moving on to Sally Rooney's Beautiful World, Where Are You? And I'm very excited to read this because of the fact that it's her most recent novel and seeing the growth of her writing once again. I'm gonna get to reading Beautiful World, Where Are You? And I'll be back with my thoughts and then we'll get to see where exactly these books rank up. I'll see you in a bit, besties. So, I read Conversations with Friends, and it's certainly an interesting novel, and I found that this novel really delivered something quite different. Beautiful World Where Are You follows Alice, a writer who becomes involved with Felix, a warehouse worker, and Eileen, her best friend, who after a breakup slips back into flirting with Simon, a man she has known since childhood. This novel focuses on the straining friendship between the two women. Alice, who struggles with her literary success and hides from the world that perceives her as a quote-unquote celebrity, and Eileen, who feels like she hasn't done much with her life, and so decides that she wants to do something more. Beautiful World Where Are You inevitably emphasises how we gravitate towards relationships in our life that make us feel loved and appreciated. The setting of this book, I believe, is roughly circa 2018, as there's a scene right at the end of the novel that takes place during the pandemic. In typical Rooney fashion, we see Alice and Eileen communicate through emails. Apart from that, we see these characters communicate via text, which is so amazing that we finally have Rooney characters that know how to use a phone. This novel, again, tackles class consciousness, interpersonal relationships, but also the guilt for wanting to be in love and be happy whilst the world is on fire and going into ruin, and the anxiety and despair of not seeing any hope in it. Sally Rooney's writing style is vastly different this time around, and I think there's like a kind of sense of maturity to it. Stylistically, I adored the writing as Rooney emphasised her macro lens into the character descriptions, and now the settings as well. Rooney also reflects on choosing a new narrative voice in her interview with Waterstones, as she mentioned. None of the narrative techniques I had used in my previous two books seem to be of any use to me this time around. I had to work out a new kind of narrative voice, or at least new to me, in order to make sense of the story I wanted to tell. However, because of this new voice, it does place a bit of distance between us, the reader, and what the characters are feeling, which again makes it feel different from her previous novels. Rooney ascribes this to the effect that she wanted to achieve in an interview with Hazlitt, as she notes, I could just impartially observe and describe the characters saying and doing things, without needing to speculate on what they secretly thought or felt. It's a distance that makes sense to me, basically the same distance that prevents us from reading the minds of other people in our real lives. I found the email interludes between Alice and Eileen quite intriguing, as not only did we get an insight into their intellectual discourse on certain topics such as Marxism and religion, but we also get a reflection of Alice and Eileen's thoughts and feelings, which feels reminiscent of her other novels. However, there were points where I did feel like I was being a bit worn down by the emails because I feel like they did run on for a bit too long. Again, in typical Rooney fashion, we get to meet a cast of characters that are intrinsically flawed and quite likeable at some points. The perspective of Alice was really intriguing for me to read as a future novelist. 
first. We see Alice's discomfort with her growing fame. She even ponders what is the relationship of the famous author to their famous books anyway. I couldn't help but feel that Rooney was drawing from her own experiences to flesh out Alice's character, but in an interview with The Guardian, Rooney is at pains to point out that she's not Alice. I have no appetite for writing about myself and things that have actually happened to me, she says. Instead, casting her experiences as a mental library she may draw from when creating her fiction. Because of this, I feel like Alice is more symbolic of the relationship Rooney has developed with her audience. Withdrawn from social media and keeping her personal life private. It's also interesting to note Rooney's relationship with Marxism and how it intersects with her relationship with fame. As for the publicity of Beautiful Worlds Where Are You, the publisher created a pop-up shop in Shoreditch dedicated to Sally Rooney, where they sold Sally Rooney's books and other books that were recommended by her. This was accompanied by a £42 calligraphy class and a £58 candle making class, which combined with the infamous Sally Rooney bucket hat, which I kind of want now because I think it would look quite nice. These things have nothing to do with this novel and so is clearly inconsistent with Sally Rooney. Rooney's political stance. It just brings into question whether the name Sally Rooney is being made into a brand or aesthetic of some sorts, rather than belonging to the novelist who wrote these books that are making these publishers money. They're not exactly selling Sally Rooney herself, instead they're selling a lifestyle that they think Sally Rooney stands want, an idealised image if you will. Which if so, furthers the conversation surrounding the discomfort of fame, popularity and the author as a brand. Whilst I found myself engrossed in the connections of Alice and Felix, whom I loved the discussions of queerness, and and Eileen and Simon, whose reconnection was comforting, the connection that I found myself most invested in was Alice and Eileen's. This friendship is at the very foundation of the novel as they see each other evolve and grow as people. Rooney even comments on the dynamic between the pair as each sometimes sees the other as a reflection of herself, and then at other times as an image of everything she is not, which is what brings their buried emotions to the service when they physically meet. Their love is unconditional and without judgement, and they truly want the best for one another. It's one of the purest forms of love that we've seen throughout Sally Rooney's novel, and it's partially why I love this novel so much, because it's their connection that keeps them from feeling like the world is ending, because despite it all, they still have each other, which is why you feel invested in the friendship between these two, because you don't know where they're gonna be at the end, because a friendship breakup is 10 times worse than a relationship breakup. Overall, I would recommend this novel if you're looking for a novel filled with hope for a better world and awesome relationship dynamics. However, if you're not a fan of long discussions on like art, Marxism, and religion, this this novel is probably not for you. But I would really like to see this adapted after conversations with friends as I feel like it would be really interesting to see the dynamic of a depressed novelist and editor really be depicted on screen. And so that is all three of Sally Rooney's novels read. I've had a blast. But now is the time for me to rank them. You may be wondering two things. First thing, yes, I did get a haircut. I think it just looks amazing. Also two, yes, my outfit does match all three of Sally Rooney's books. Conversations with friends, normal people, and then, oh, beautiful world, where are you? I think it looks stunning. So as I often mentioned, I'm going to be ranking the novels based on how much I enjoyed them because I did really enjoy all three of these books. I want all of you to leave a comment in the comment section down below, giving your predictions as to what I would rank the three Sally Rooney novels as. We're gonna have a look at what Carly, Jack, and I predicted for our rankings, and so we're gonna flip on over to them and pass me in order to see what they ranked. Give me a moment. I'm sorry, this is so unprofessional. Let's talk about Sally Rooney. Hi everyone here who doesn't know me. My name is Carly, Uncarly on YouTube. I also talk about books. Everybody comment below if you want me to start a fight with fictional fates, but I love Sally Rooney. I talk about Sally Rooney a lot. I think the Sally Rooney you will like least is Beautiful World Where Are You. From watching your videos and talking to you, I think you like strong characters. You like compelling relationships. I found the relationships in this the least compelling. It has a lot of very like good philosophical brainy stuff. And I'm not saying you're not smart. That's not what I'm saying. But the characters in this, I think are genuinely the least likable Sally Rooney characters. And I think this is the least readable Sally Rooney. It's like a lot. I think second, you will like conversations with friends, mainly because it slaps, it's a banger, it goes super hard, it's amazing. The elements of like, queerness and power and relationships. I think you'll like, I think you'll like that. And also, I think you probably like Bobby. Bobby's a queen. We absolutely are team Bobby in this household. But I think the one you'll like the most is normal people. Great relationships, much more likable characters than the first two. You really root for them. You really like them. I think there's a reason this is her most popular one and it's just because it's so good. It's so damn good. God, you want them to get together so bad, don't you? You really care about them. And I think that is why this will be your number one. I've thought an embarrassing amount about this. Okay.
Hey Joel, Jack Edwards here from the Sally Rooney Defense League. Let's talk about mummy. Sorry, mummy, sorry. Sally Rooney. My personal order of preference is normal people, number one, then beautiful world, where are you? and then conversations with friends. However, because you've read all these books in quite quick succession, I think that your order of preference might be normal people top, still, but then conversations with friends, and then beautiful world, where are you? But I'm intrigued to know your thoughts, I'm intrigued to watch your video, and thank you so much for having me on your channel. Hello besties, so here's my preliminary rankings for Sally Rooney's books. I think it's gonna be really interesting to see what I actually rank them as, but for now, my entire reasoning for this ranking order is literally just the vibes that I get from these books. And so, in number three, we have Normal People. For number two, we have Beautiful Worlds Where Are You, which literally probably just missed the number one slot. And then for number one, the only remaining novel that we have left, Conversations with Friends, because I just think, it just feels like I will relate to this a lot more than the other two. But yeah, that's my ranking. I just find it funny that Jack and Carly did their predictions separately. Carly going from three to one, Jack going from one to three, and both of them have the same exact prediction list. Because Carly was trying to make it into a competition between the pair of them, now they're both basically gonna end up having the same score anyway. I love them both so much, I'll have their channels linked in the description down below. Their minds are amazing, and the way they talk about books as well is just phenomenal, and so I think you'd really like them as well. Okay, so it's the moment you've all been waiting for, and I'm very excited excited to deliver my rankings to you. And for each of these books, I will be giving pros and cons, just in case certain readers want specific aspects of the novel that aren't there. However, a prior warning, if you read books for developed plots, dialogue with quotations, or plenty of likeable characters, then Sally Rooney is probably not for you. Simple as that. Sally Rooney writes about characters' lives, and they don't necessarily have a structure to them. Instead, she opts to realistically depict the chaos of life and show how sometimes we can be selfish and brutal to one another. And so, we have the rankings. In third place, we have Conversations with Friends. It's an interesting look into the shifting dynamics of interpersonal relationships, and basically Bobby is a fucking epic person. Like, if we got Bobby's perspective within this, I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more than I did. However, at points, the characters just feel unrealistically unemotional, and Despite being told that they've grown as people, we're not really shown that at the end. And then in second place, this one literally just missed the top slot, like I mentioned in my prediction. And so we have A Beautiful World, Where Are You? I love the steady straining friendship between Alice and Eileen as they deal with identity, popularity, and just trying to fucking be happy in this chaotic world. However, the interlude chapters of the emails between Alice and Eileen can run on for a bit too long, and unless the topics grip you, you'll be quite bored by them. And then, in the number one spot, my favourite Sally Rooney novel today is Normal People. Yeah, I didn't expect that either. In this, I loved the commentary on how people's socioeconomic positions can affect their relationships, thoughts, and feelings. And this novel really starts the discussions on the nuances of popularity that are further exemplified in Beautiful World, Where Are You? Let us not forget Lorraine as the main pro of this novel. However, because Rooney honed in so much on the dynamic between Connell and Marianne, a few of the side characters lack any real depth, and sometimes they come across as quite archetypal characters. So yeah, this is my ranking for all of Sally Rooney's novels. I've had an amazing time about them and like my final thought basically is that overall Rooney explores the ways in which we interact with other people and what it means to keep trying after failing to understand one another. But yeah that is everything for today. I hope you enjoyed this video besties and I really enjoyed the start of this kind of new series maybe and this kind of vlog style but also combined with the video essay. It, it's just been amazing and it's probably one of my most favorite videos that I've created today. And again a massive thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. You can use the link in my description and use code FATE in order to get your Facebook of the Month box for only $9.99. A massive thank you to Carly and Jack for providing their rankings for today's video. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button so that you're notified whenever I upload next. You can find all my social medias in the comment section down below, including on Coffee Link, which you can use to donate any amount of money which will help support the channel further. And yeah, I'm really excited to see what author I read and rank next. If you have any suggestions, be sure to leave them in the comment section. And so yeah, I guess until the next time, Bye, besties.